In order to become a better angler, you have to spend time on the water. One word to become a better angler, curiosity. That one bit on a hair jig. Get out of your comfort zone, it'll make you a better angler. Welcome to Angling Buzz. We have a great episode today. The topic is how to become a better angler. Now the truth is, there's a lot of different factors when it comes to fishing. Understanding how to use your electronics to find fish, as well as understanding the seasonal movements of different species, how to experiment with the different baits that are in your tackle box, and also trying to learn a little bit more each time you go out fishing. And I think most seasoned anglers will tell you the best on the job training, I guess as you could put it, is simply time on the water. And we have a number of pros today and guides sharing their advice and expertise into the different aspects of fishing. First up is my cousin James Linder. He's a multi-species angler. He fishes bass tournaments, rivers for catfish, musky fishing, saltwater fishing, but of course we're focusing on the upper Midwest here. So James, what can you share us about your thoughts on the subject matter of electronics? Realistically, every time you put the boat in the water, you have to realize you're following fish that are moving seasonally. And uh, one thing that's really tremendous, and I never hear a lot of people talking about that, is doing map study prior to going out on the lake. And that's sort of cool because I don't have to be on the water. I can actually look at the map based on the time frame of the year I'm going out and adjust my map and look at potential spots to go to. It's early season right now, so a lot of the fish are gonna be probably shallower than about 12, 15 foot of water. I can actually set my depth highlight at 15 foot, and I can actually focus on those di di given areas that are applicable for that given species, whether it be crappies, whether it be walleyes, whether it be smallmouth bass, whether I'm fishing for muskies. It doesn't make any difference what the species are, but the thing is the logic and how to use electronics is a monstrous portion of the equation. In summer, the fish start shifting out. They're moving from the shallow spawning areas out towards main lake shelves, big underwater points, sunken islands. I can adjust my map for that time frame of the year and that'll give me a lot better focus on where I'm fishing. It's all about efficiency and that's what mapping is so incredibly effective for you as an angler. Okay, and after you've located the fish with your electronics, what's your process on lure selection? That's a really great question. You know, over the course of a year, I actually get a chance to uh, travel and do some different speaking and different seminars across the country for all different species of fish, whether it be bass fishermen, sometimes walleye anglers, sometimes musky anglers. And they ask me, what's your favorite lure? And you look at, this is, happens to be my bass tackle. I'm prepping for a tournament to you in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to the Sturgeon Bay Open. But the thing is, when you look at my tackle, I have all different types of baits that move differently in the water. Depth, speed, action, where the bait is moving is a critical aspect of catching fish and experimenting with different lures. And you'll say because every one of these baits, whether it be the frogs, top water, buzz baits, X wraps, mavericks, rattle baits, chatter baits, crank baits, jigs, spinner baits, might be the best bait for the day. And that's one thing that you as an angler, you have to garner confidence in the lures in your tackle box and where to use them and when to use them. But not only that, you as an angler is willingness to experiment how that bait is moving in the water. Where is it moving in the water? Depth, speed, and action is a critical aspect of angling. And that's what you have to do is every time you go out in the water is fine tune and it's amazing how many different times I've been out fishing with people. Here's a great example of it. I was out with my wife and we're catching bass. I'm catching bass on every cast and Lori looks at me and says, why, in, why are you catching all the fish? And I'm, we're not catching anything. I looked at her really simple. Stop reeling your lure. <laughs> all of a sudden, it just, all of a sudden it clicked. All of a sudden they stopped and dunk, dunk, dunk. And all of a sudden they all start catching fish. That's what I mean. Sometimes slow is not the way to go. Sometimes speed is really critical. Sometimes the bottom bouncing baits work really good. Sometimes swimming baits work really good. Sometimes surface running baits work really well, dependent on the species of fish you're fishing for. The biggest thing is here is you as an angler have to experiment with the baits in your tackle box to be efficient on the water and to ultimately catch fish really super consistently.
Thank you, James. Appreciate your time and sharing your thoughts on how to become a better angler. In this next segment, our highlight destination feature, we're heading to Alexandria, Minnesota with guy Joe Segura. What truly sets Alexandria apart is its amazing vacation and fishing opportunities. I'm Joe Segura. I've been a fishing guide in the Alexandria area for over 20 years. You get one? Ooh, that looks nice. Oh, that's a big one. Get him. <laughs> Hold him up. Sweet. Let me get a little closer. Whether you're an experienced angler or just starting out, Alexandria's Lakes area offers some of the best fishing in the state of Minnesota. Whoa. Wow. How's that one look, huh? Pretty fish. Wow. Wow, what a fish. You know, I've said this so many times, the smallmouth boom is happening all over the country and in my home state of Minnesota, it's been on fire, on fire. We're in, in an area, a community called Alexandria and uh, it's filled with lakes. There's lakes all over the area. Smallmouth lakes, largemouth lakes, crappie, walleye, big giant muskie, good pike. The fishing here is phenomenal like it is in many of the communities by us, go fish, go. You know, this area is notorious for good fishing. I sneak over here and fish this area here, this Alex area, a fair amount. And uh, it's just because it's got so many good lakes. And the bass fishing here is really, really good. Really good. Look at that guy there. And when you're not out on the water, Alexandria has plenty of other activities around the area for you to enjoy. Plan your trip today and come explore Alexandria. And if you'd like, I can even take you fishing. Any day you can get walleye like this, and this is the reason right here. This fish, why so many people come to the Alexandria area. Walleye eaters, and then the size like this, and even much bigger. In this next segment, we have some pros and guides sharing their advice and thoughts on the subject matter of how to become a better angler. One word to become a better angler curiosity. Number one thing, get better with your electronics. The best advice I can give you, go fishing every chance you get. The most important thing is practice. Challenge yourself every season to learn something new, whether it's a bite, a pattern, or a technique. Go to a body of water you never fished before and fish a handful of baits that you never used before. You put forward-facing sonar, premium mapping, side imaging, down imaging together, and you are an unstoppable force on the water. When you spend time on the water, you're gonna learn about the fish species you wanna catch, including their habits, their preferred habitats, feeding patterns, and you're gonna be able to experiment with different baits, lures, and techniques to see what works best in different conditions. My mentor and guiding partner for many years, Terry Peterson, uh, taught me back uh, when I began guiding that you always have to challenge yourself and push yourself to keep on learning. Uh, no matter how much you think you already know, he told me, he said, if, you're, if you quit learning, you better quit guiding. And I've always kind of carried that through the years. And so every year I push myself, I challenge myself to learn something new and really stay curious really wonder what other people are doing and how they're doing it because no matter how much you think you've got figured out there's always something out there that can make you a better fisherman if you think you're good get better if you think you're the best get better get out of your comfort zone it'll make you a better angler This week we're featuring the Rage Rain Suit in our Blackfish Giveaways. Now it's a jacket and bibs. It's incredibly breathable and super comfortable to wear. It also features event technology that's gonna keep you dry no matter what conditions you're fishing in. Now you can win this suit if you scan the QR code below or head to anglingbuzz.com and you can click on our giveaways.
And now it's time for our cool products, and we're going to start with the Northland Tackle Eye Candy Paddle Shad. This is made of super stretchy and durable TPE material. This is a three and a half inch bait, but as you can see, this thing stretches out really far. It's extremely durable, which means you'll be able to catch a lot of fish on one bait. And here's a quick tip. What you can do is dab a little bit of glue, maybe Loctite, on the back of your jig, slide this on there, and you'll be able to catch a ton of fish. The shape of this bait and the way it's molded, even at slow speeds, you're reeling it slow across the bottom, it has a ton of action. You can fish this for bass, walleye, snap jigging this for walleye can work really well. Now these do float, so that's something to consider, and I would suggest maybe like a quarter ounce jig head or even a three eighth ounce jig head if you're rolling it along the bottom over gravel, boulders, or you're snap jigging it for walleye. Yeah, the eye candy series from Northland Tackle, this is the Paddle Shad. And next from Wavy Label, this is the Amber Glass Lens. Now the Spawn series from Wavy Label is available in a polycarbonate lens as well as a glass lens. The glass is a higher end lens, a different price point. Both feature the Wavy Label Lifetime Warranty. These have a wrap around style. They're very comfortable to wear. Also that helps block out the sun, which is important when you're sight fishing for bass. And also the springtime sight fishing for emergent vegetation like for crappies or bluegill. The Spawn series of sunglasses from Wavy Label. And next from Rapla, the original floating Rapla. Now this is a tried and tested lure going back almost 90 years. It mimics an injured bait fish, which is great for just about any predatory fish, bass, walleye, trout. It does float, so you can fish this like a surface bait. You can also simply cast this out and just slowly reel it in. You can also fish these like a jerk bait. The size 13 that I have here as well as the size 11 are very popular among bass and walleye anglers. You can also fish these deeper, say on three-way rigs or bottom bouncers for deeper walleye. There's a lot of different sizes and color options too. The original floating Rapla. And next, the Avid series from St. Croix. The Avid series is handcrafted in Park Falls, Wisconsin. These are made from premium components from the tip of the rod all the way to the handle. The Avid series features a very comfortable grip, these cork handles, and also there's a wide variety of different powers, actions, and lengths available. The one I have here, this is the Avid Walleye. This is a 7.6 medium light power, extra fast action, kind of one of their longer rods. The Avid series features a new SEC3 Plus blank that's a lighter material. The Avid series is a step up from their Triumph series, and they also have their high-end rods like their Legend Tournament series, but this is kind of in the middle if you're looking for a very high quality rod. The Avid series from St. Croix. And now it's time for our technique of the week. You know, it's springtime, we're getting the boats out of storage, and it's just a great time to fish. But what I want to run through today is kind of a list of things that you have to have no matter what species you're chasing. And the first is a good quality net. Now this is a clam net, and what's nice about this, it actually has a tape measure built in. So, you know, depending on certain lakes, there might be slots, and uh, it's just nice to know too how long the fish you're catching. It also has a rubber coated meshing which is great for releasing fish, you know, helps keep them nice and protected. Now the next things that you need to have, and I like to have a couple spread out throughout the boat, is hook removing devices. So good quality pliers, you need to have a lot of them, right, they're easy to lose, easy to misplace, so I like to have a couple, you know, two in the front, two in the back, it's good to have, good pliers. Also another tool is hook cutter slash line cutter, right? This is important whether you're chasing pike or muskie and you're using big baits like that and you have to cut hooks, that's nice to have, but also just cut in line. It's nice to have a few of these sprinkled out throughout the boat. And another thing I like to bring is a good quality scale because you never know when you're gonna catch a real whopper. And I also like to check the batteries on this to make sure it's working every season. Now with today's electronics and how we like to rig our boats, it's important to have a screen cleaner. So that's something that we always have in the boat, you know, especially if it's raining, water droplets, it's just nice to have something that you can wipe the screen away and you can actually see what you're looking at. Now, the next three items are for protection. One, 
is protection from the bugs. They're not here yet, but they're coming. You gotta have bug spray. The second is sunscreen, right? You wanna protect your skin. It's good to have a couple cans of sunscreen on your boat. And the third is good quality sunglasses. These are Wavy Label sunglasses. They're great for protecting your eyes, but not only are they good for protecting your eyes, they're great for looking in the water, right? I can see structure, I can see fish. It's springtime, fish are shallow. These are the best ways to find them. So good quality sunglasses are a key no matter what you're fishing for. And then the last thing you can't leave the dock without is good quality rain gear because you don't want to head on the lake and actually need it. And another nice thing too, if you're in big waves, you can throw this on, you'll stay nice and dry. But I got pants and a coat. I keep it in a dry bag on the boat here. And these are just some essential things you can't leave the dock without and you want to pack before you head out on the lake this season. Along with your fishing tackle and safety equipment, those are some great items to also have in your boat. And we can all help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Remember, anytime you're leaving any body of water, clean, drain, dry. And be sure to follow us across our social medias, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Simply Angling Buzz. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.